It has been two years since I made a video about this, so let me share with you how I achieve a 3D pixel art effect in Unity in 2025, similar to what you're seeing right now. In this video, I will start with the most basic implementation of this effect and will make it better and better by adding more features to it until we have a pretty solid final result. In my previous video, I used the renderer feature with a shader to achieve this effect, but that solution has a problem. You still need to render the image at full resolution before you can downscale it. If you're not going to need the full resolution render, why bother rendering it? Today, we're gonna let the camera write directly to a render texture that will draw to the UI. So, level 1 is actually pretty straightforward. Let's create a new render texture in our project and set it to whatever resolution we want. I'm going to do 320 by 180. To achieve the crispy pixel art look, you need to remember to set the filter mode to point. Now, drag and drop the render texture to the output texture field in the camera's inspector and nothing is showing up. To fix this, let's create a new UI canvas and a raw image object. Let's set the raw image to stretch to fit the entire screen and assign our render texture to it. Mission complete! Please remember to make sure your canvas is set to screen space overlay mode so that it can be drawn without any separate cameras. Also, if you're annoyed by the no cameras rendering warning that shows up, you can just right click on the game window title and disable it. Before we write any code, let's address the elephant in the room. The default shader does not fit the pixel art aesthetic we're going for. But we can easily fix it by using a tune or cell shader for our materials and adding some sort of edge detection or outline post-processing effect. Unfortunately, I have no time in this video to show how these are made, but I'll leave some links in the description. Also, let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of that. But wait, does this look like you? I mean, of course not, that's me. But if you're also trying to become a better game dev, you might appreciate the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for personal and professional growth. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So, while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you also will be becoming a better thinker. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations, learn real-world applications and strengthen your game dev muscles. Learn essential coding elements, from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag-and-drop editor. And most importantly, develop your mind to think like a programmer and begin writing complex programs to build great games and apps. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash malimakes or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can also click the link in the description. On top of that, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the tutorial. Now, so far I've carefully kept my game window at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but if you're going to support resizable windows or differently shaped displays, you might want to avoid hard coding the render texture size in the asset itself. So, let's finally write some code to create a new render texture with updated dimensions every time we might need it. In a new pixel art camera script, let's add a reference to the camera component and a UI raw image. And also a field for the desired height of our render texture. Let's also add a private render texture member. Let's create a void method that takes no parameters. And first thing first, let's make sure we free up the resources used by our existing render texture, if we have one, before we create a new one with updated dimensions. Now, let's calculate the height of our new render texture using the screen's aspect ratio and this formula. If you'd prefer using the desired width rather than height, you can just use the inverse of the aspect ratio here. Let's create a new render texture, and since Zero P does not support 0 bits for depth, I'm just gonna put 16 here. For the color format, I'm just using the default one you need to show in the documentation. After creating it, let's set the filter mode of our render texture to point, and now we can assign it to our camera and raw image. Just calling this method in start will allow us to see it in action. To detect changes in the screen size, we could run a screen size check in update, but what I'm going to do is create a UI behavior component that overrides the on rect transform dimensions changed method and assign this to the raw image. I'm going to add our update render texture method to the Unity events listeners and it will be called automatically every time the screen changes size. 
the final feature I'm going to add addresses the reason why two years ago I chose to use post processing to achieve this effect. In fact, cameras rendering to a texture do not support pointer effects, like clicking on an object with a mouse, for example. Now, I cannot take credit for the solution to this issue, so I'm going to shout out and link this great GitHub repository by River Wang, where they implemented the physics raycaster to work with render texture cameras. Just save the component, add it to your camera, and voila, it magically works. Welcome to Mali Okay, let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to add is especially going to be relevant to you if you're making a first person game. If you're making a first person game, you're probably going to have the player hold some items. For example, a gun, I'm using a tripod, but it could also be a cup. I'm gonna use this cup here in this, uh, in this video. And if you hold it in front of the camera, when you walk to a wall, the item that you're holding in front of the camera might clip through the wall and you might not want that to happen. It might not be a problem, but you also might not want that to happen. So how do we fix this problem? It's pretty easy actually. Since we're using URP, we can just create a new camera and just render the items to that camera and not let the camera render anything else. And then throw it in front of everything else. So first thing we need to do, we go to our item and we create a new layer. I'm gonna call it first person items and we are gonna set the item to that layer. Okay, that's the first step. Now we're going to, you can see the cup here. We're going to place the cup somewhere where it looks good in front of our camera, okay? This might be it. So if you look at our camera, it's here. The item is just standing in front of it. Of course, you're gonna have your animations. You're gonna have your way of dealing with this. This is just a quick example. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new camera just as a child of the main camera. I'm gonna call it first person items camera. And this camera, I'm only going to set its calling mask to nothing and then just to first person items. So if we were to um, just show this camera, yeah, if you, if you look at this, this camera is only showing the cup. We can also enable post processing so it shows it with the same colors as the rest of the scene but that's not important um, now what we want to do is go to the main camera that as you can see it's still showing the cup and we remove that layer from the first person from the calling mask so we remove it the main camera does not see the cup anymore while the first person camera only sees the cup and now very simply we just go to the first person camera and we set its render type to overlay and then we go to the main camera and add the first person items camera to the stack. So now it's showing both, okay? Now it's showing both. It's showing the new cup, that the first person cup in front of everything else. And you might wonder, yeah, okay, but how does that fix the problem? If I move my camera into like somewhere where the cup would feel like would clip through the, the wall, you can see this happening. Like, okay, let's let's try to, to make that cup like clip through the wall it's never gonna clip it's never gonna hide because it's just rendering to a camera that doesn't see anything else so that's the first thing that's the very first thing that uh, you might want to do in your game now let's go to the second one so let me reload the scene and this is more like it really depends on what game you're making it really depends on what you're trying to do and how you want things to look like but a problem with pixelated rendering especially if you're achieving a pixel art look, is that you have pixels that are very chunky. They occupy a large section of the screen. But as you can see here, like a pixel here shows so much more detail than a pixel in the background does. So we have these post-it notes that, as you can see, are pretty small on the fridge. And they are so huge with respect to like how they should look in a, like especially the outline is incredibly huge and you might like it I personally like it I, I don't mind it in, in this uh, in this scene specifically but you might want to like to achieve a more high fidelity pixel art look you might want to just set your your camera to auto graphic now it's gonna mess the entire thing up <laughs> It's going to mess the entire thing up. Uh, you're gonna have to, of course, change the game you're making. But as you can see, if I go with an orthographic camera, everything is changed, the outline is messed up. I set the outline specifically for my camera settings, so uh, it's not a, an immediate fix. You're gonna have to work around with it and to realize what game you're making and what looks best for it. You can see is not every pixel shows the same amount of detail in the screen because you don't have perspective anymore. 
and um, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks more pixel arty, probably. And um, I, I just felt like sharing it. If you're going for a very pixel art look, you can see at other creators' work, for example, the very famous Tessellator. They're using a overhead orthographic camera because it works really well with this, uh, with this style. And uh, yeah, I thought you should know that. If you liked the video, please consider liking it, subscribing, and letting me know what you want to see next in the comments. That said, thank you for watching, cheers to you, and I'll see you next time.